the software that we're going to use to prepare the models um, for 3D printing is the Prusa Slicer. If you look, you've got that little logo right there. Uh, I've already got an instance open so that we can start. And whenever you open it, this is what you're going to see. Um, a quick rundown of what's inside here. You've got your different settings that we're going to go through a little bit later on. We've got some manipulation tools right here that we're going to talk about here in just a bit. This piece in the center, which is the build plate. Uh, this is a mock-up of the build plate that is actually on the printer we're going to be using. Um, you've got your uh, coordinate system right there. Over on this side over here, we've got different settings. We've got the print settings, which is the quality or the layer height that we're going to be using. Um, pretty much for everything until we get a bit more advanced, we're going to just go ahead and stick with the 0.2 millimeter quality settings. Um, the filament that we're going to use is the uh, Prusament PLA, those settings. Um, and obviously the printer that we are using is the uh, Prusa i3 and K3S. Um, we'll get into all of the different buttons and everything a little bit later on. The first thing I'm going to show you guys how to do is import a model, an STL file. So we're going to go up to File and Import. And you'll see the very first thing is Import STL or an object file. We're going to go ahead and click that. And I'm just going to go to a sample file that we have here, which is 3D Benchy. And if you've been around 3D printing, you'll know what this is. Um, it's just a little sample boat. Um, it offers a lot of features that kind of tests out your 3D printer. That's why it's been so popular. Um, as you can see, it dropped it right in the middle of the build plate. Now, we just successfully imported our first model. And if we didn't want to change anything else, we could go down here to the slice now button we can click that it will process through it and you'll see it changed the appearance of it these two buttons down here allow us to switch back and forth between the slice mode and the 3d editor mode so if i go back to this box right down here on the left that's the 3D editor mode, and if I switch back over here, this is the slice mode or the layer mode. The layer mode allows us to look at what's going on with the model that has been sliced, and the 3D editor mode gives me the ability to manipulate the position or the rotation of the model itself before we slice it. So what do we do once we have the model imported? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is learn how to manipulate viewing the model. Um, one of the tools that you can use is the view button up here. And as you'll see, you can use the numbers that are on your keyboard to snap to standardized views, um, isometric view, top view, you know, front view. It just allows you to look at those, and sometimes that's handy. Uh, most of the time, however, um, we'll just start off with that. That gives us a more three-dimensional view. Uh, that's a good way to do some fine-tuning work and everything, but usually what you want to see is something a little more free. Um, so we can use the mouse buttons. The left mouse button, if you click and hold the, the left mouse button, uh, somewhere away from right at the model, you can do a free form scrolling around, uh, rotation, things like that. Uh, the right mouse button allows you to pan. Uh, the middle mouse button also does a pan if you click and hold. And if you have a wheel on your mouse, you can scroll to zoom in and out. Um, 
a lot of times I just use the left mouse button and the middle mouse button because it's out of habit. Um, so that allows us to, to look at all sides of the model and see where we're at and how everything is sitting uh, on there. The next thing that we're going to probably need to do is once we are able to see what's going on there, we may need to move the model around on the build plate. Uh, that's this button right here on the left. So we can click it and as you can see, we get these arrows up on here. Now, if you want to move the model in one axis direction, you can click on that box on that arrow and that allows you to move the model just in that plane. And that's handy sometimes. Um, you can move the model up and down uh, in the Z axis. If you move it way up and you let go, it's going to snap it back until something on the model uh, basically has a collision with the bed because you can't print a model up in space. It has to be physically contacting the bed. The next thing that you might run into is that your scale is wrong. If you model something in inches every once in a while you'll get an error to where it doesn't scale properly whenever it comes in. So it's always a really really good idea to look down here and look at your uh, look at your dimensions and the size box here and just verify that those dimensions are the size of your physical object. And if it's not, we can come in here and we can add a scale factor. Um, if you click down in one of these boxes for your scale factor, unless you mess with this little lock guy right here, if we did say 200%, it is uniform. If you notice, all of them changed to 200%. Now you can alter that and scale it in uh, in one direction, but we're not going to mess with that right now. So I'm going to put that back to 100%. So that's that's scaling, which is this guy right here. Um, you can drag in one direction, and you'll see that that's only changing the x direction down here. I'm going to change that back to 100%. And so that's just a way that you can drag in different directions and scale. Rotate allows you to rotate your model. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to rotate this model. And if you if you saw what I did right there, if you grab uh, and hold. On there you'll see these snaps and those are at 45 degrees and you can you can actually grab snaps out here that are uh, that are at finer increments as well so uh, that can be handy but for for right now I'm just going to leave my model at this weird angle so that I can show you the next feature that we're going to do so I'm going to I'm going to click off of that and if we move around and look we can see if we tried to print this model like this it's not going to end well for us because there's not really any contact area on the build plate. And so if you import a model that you have designed and you end up with something like this this feature right here the place on the face command is going to be really handy. We're going to hit that and if you notice it's going to turn on these little uh, these little white areas here. If I want to put the bottom against the build plate I can come up to this guy right here and hit that and I'm going to turn that off so that I can look around on it and as you see now we've got that sitting right on the build plate. We've got this flat area that we want right against the build plate.
The next one down is called cut. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't really use this command very much. Um, it's usually people that are uh, trying to modify something they downloaded off the internet. Um, there is a purpose for it if you want to do some fancier things. But basically, if you click on it, it just allows you to pick a place that you can slice your model parallel to the build plate and you can you can manually enter in a dimension you can say okay I want to keep the upper part or the lower part I want to keep both parts and then you can also do a rotation on there I'm not going to cut this guy but you get the idea of what you can do there so now that we have our model where we want it the next thing we're going to do is we are going to slice it now to slice it, the most basic operation is we're going to select our print settings and for the beginning of this class we're just going to use the default 0.20 millimeter quality setting. That's the standard that is there. If you need to open that up you can pull it down and you can choose from some of these. Like I said, you can have other user presets. These are some that I've come up with on my own. You can select your filament. We're going to use the Prusament PLA filament settings and the printer is obviously the printer that we're going to use. Now, if I don't want to do anything else, I can just hit slice. The infill is the amount of material percentage that it prints on the inside of a part. You can look back at the presentation and it'll give a better explanation for what that is, but I'll show you guys that here in just a second. So we are going to hit slice now and our model is sliced. So what I like to do every time I slice a print is I like to zoom down in on it so that I can really see what's going on. And it's going to look a little bit coarse whenever you do this, but that's okay. So as you can see, we can see the layers and things like that that are going on. And the different colors tell you a little bit about what each layer is doing. If you look over here, this little slider here, if I grab that and bring it down, you'll notice over here the model is changing. And what it's doing is it's dropping the layers. And we can go layer by layer. And what you're seeing is the layer by layer process. So if we start at the bottom you can grab that and drag it up or you can use the up and down arrows. Now this in here is your infill. Now this particular infill that I have selected is called the gyroid infill. Um, I like this infill for a couple of different reasons. Um, it is a very quick to print infill um, and it is more isotropic than some of the other infills are. If you like a different infill, you can print whatever you like, but I've had a lot of success with this. This is a three-dimensional infill, and as you can see, if I scroll up and down, it kind of morphs as you build the layer heights. And what that's doing is, is it is creating a shape inside of there that it's not a honeycomb but it is a three-dimensional shape that transfers some of the forces in a more uniform fashion it gives it gives a fair amount of strength for what it is 
And as we go up, we start to see the model being built. And take that all the way to the top. And if we're happy with that, we can come down here and we can say export the G-code. And it will give us an option to save the file wherever we want to save it. You can rename it. Yeah. And that's that.